Here we are once again, this time for week three. We're back at our Coral Language Simulator. Our requirements are a lot like they were last week in, in the program we did last week with a twist or two. So what we'll be doing this week is creating a program that asks the user how many numbers to add, but rather than using a while loop, it uses a for loop to collect the numbers and accumulate the total as you go. We'll still be displaying the total of the numbers is and the number, but after that, we're going to display a message your number is pretty low if the total is less than 100, and otherwise we'll be displaying a, a message your number is pretty high. So this is going to require that we use an if statement. So within this week's program, we'll be using variables, calculations, output, input, we'll be using a for loop, and we'll be using an if statement. So just about everything you possibly can use, we will be. So let's begin with a program that is basically the same as we had last week. I hope this looks familiar to you. Now, right after this line last week, we <clears throat> had uh, we started with count. But in this case, with count, we're not going to do that. And that's largely because of the way that a for loop manages um, manages that variable. After total, we're still going to have our output and gather our input. We're still going to use the same input numbers that we did last time so we can check to make sure we get the same output. Now, let's look at our for loop. So a for loop has, it has obviously the word for, but then after it, it has three different sections. The first one tells us the, it initializes the variable variable we're going to use to count. So we would say count equals zero. That's the reason why we didn't have it up earlier. The second thing it does is it tells us how long to stay in the for loop with the, the exact same language as the while loop. So count is less than how many numbers. And then the last thing is the what we call the incrementer or adding to count. So count equals count plus one. So by doing this, we don't have to initialize count outside of the for loop, and we don't have to increment or add to count outside of the for loop, or within the for loop. All right, so we're going to do the same exact things that we did in our other um, program. I'm just going to copy them in here so that it takes us a little less time. Hopefully this, again, looks familiar to you. And now we're done with our for loop. We're going to use the exact, I remember I had, I'm not sure why it wasn't in here. You remember that? And we're going to have the same output statements here. So it will display exactly the same. All right. Now, I'm going to put in one more output st statement, and this time it's just going to give us that line in the of line message. Now we get to use an if statement. Now with an if statement, we start with if, and we're going to say, what is the condition? What's the logical expression or condition where we will do the first set of tasks? And then if we don't do those, then if it's, if it's false, then we'll do the next set of tasks. So Here's where our logical expression goes. And then we'll do first set. Now we could just stop there. And what that would mean is then everybody gets this next condition. Or we can say else. And we can have a second set of um, statements that only happen if the logical expression is false. So we want our logical expression to say, if total is less than 100. So if total is less than 100, we want, according to our requirements, we want to say your number is pretty low to output. If it doesn't, if it's false, we want to say your number is pretty high. Now, 
I've been kind of tap dancing around something here. This one is going to input is going to um, output if total is less than 100, but this one is not going to output if total is greater than 100. It's going to output if total is equal to or greater than 100, because if it's equal to 100 or greater, then this condition will be false. I hope that makes sense. It's a little thing, but it's pretty big. All right, so let's check our syntax. Syntax looked good. And let's go through and run our program. Okay, so if we look at our output here, we did the add, enter a number, one, two, three, four times. I need to put a slash n right here. Let's just run it one more time so it's a little cleaner. We're gonna go fast this time. We saw what it did. One thing you should notice as it goes through this loop is that when it comes to the end, it goes over here to count and then reevaluates. So it kind of goes in a circle. And because it's once it has done the three statements here in the for loop, then it comes back, adds one to count, then reevaluates whether this is still true or not. If it's false, it goes through again. If it's true, then it skips down. And then notice the total of the numbers is 100. The display your number is pretty high okay that's because it was a hundred or less if I was to come up here and change this to 29 or 39 and then we were to run it again let's just make it instantaneous this time then notice our total is 99 and it displays your number is pretty low so I hope this has helped you to again remember a little bit more about how we do variables calculations output, input, you've learned the for loop. It has the three different steps there, the initialization, the logical expression, and the, accumulate, or the uh, iteration. And then you also learned a for, a for loop, or an if statement, sorry. And in the if statement, uh, if, it's, if the logical expression is true, it does the first section, else it does the second section. So good luck on your programs for this week.